distant. You may can't see them, but look behind you because there's a legion of angels behind you. There's a there's there's an army. There's oh, armies God. behind you. You are not alone. And even with all that you are going through, there's so much that you're being kept from. Every time you get out there on the road, the angels are working, keeping you from seeing and unseen dangers. Come on. If you just begin to start telling him, thank you. If you just begin to start saying, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for the stuff that I don't even see that you're doing because I'm still here. You're keeping me here. There's a reason that I'm still here. I don't even know all the reasons because right now I'm just really just flooded in my mind with frustration and irritation. But God, beyond my own frustration and irritation and, and me just being distracted with the, the stuff that I'm going through and that I'm, I'm in right now now but above all of that can I just say God I thank you God I appreciate you God I'm in gratitude God I just love you God I, my mouth is moving so I thank you God I can see this morning so I thank you for giving me sight to see I can hear something this morning so I just want to thank you for my hearing I want to thank you for my speaking I want to thank you for my walking I want to thank you for my talking I want to thank you that my heart is beating this morning because if I got a heartbeat that means means, God, you can still do something with my heart. I don't have to stay stony. I don't have to stay angry. I don't have to stay bitter. I don't have to stay in the state that I'm in. We serve the kind of God that won't leave you in the state that you're in, my God. I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing because I know we may have some on here that, you know, you, you may not go, you know, I'm a PK kid and, you know, so I've been raised in the church and they get to preaching and hooping and stuff so like it's in me by default i'm not yelling at you i'm not yelling at you i'm not i'm not yelling i'm passionate glory to god and the anointing is on me i feel the fire of god but i'm and i'm trying to pull myself in a little bit because i don't want you to feel yelled at i don't want you to feel i don't want you to feel that i just i'm warring and i feel the war in the spiritual realm uh, spiritual realm is like a realm and levels that we may not always see, but you know it. You know that it's there. You know that there are things that are operating that you can't see, but it it it, it it's trying to take you out. It's trying. There's something that seems to keep causing things to fail in your life. And you, it's like you take five steps forward and you get knocked back ten steps. And 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 so you know, I'm I'm picking up on the energies of those that are utterly frustrated this morning and just want to give up. Like I'm feeling you. Um, this morning and so you know and because I'm feeling you and I am an intercessor um, and I pray for people so I have to I'm picking up the energy at the same time I'm warring on your behalf and and so but you're hearing my voice and you and there are things that are taking place in the spirit at the same time so that's what's that is what's happening that's what's happening but I got nothing but love for every sister that is represented um here um on this morning and let me just tell you something. So when you hear people that gets excited and they get to roaring, you know, they get to getting excited and stuff. Listen, um, uh, uh, in Genesis, when uh, God hovered, he hovered over the waters. I talked about this a little bit ago about what seasons mean. And seas, S-E-A-S, Seas in seasons, seas in the Hebrews means to roar. It literally means war. So when God is hovering over the waters, when he's hovering over the seas, um, it also seas means the multitude, people, nations. OK, so he's hovering over his seas. He's hovering over his creation, over his people, over the multitude, over the nations. So he's hovering over our season, our season. His presence is hovering over you and the season that you're in and you are in a new season. He's 
hovering over you that is worshiping him. So when you war, he's hovering, you are connecting. So God is hovering over us this morning and he's hovering over our response and we are the seas, we are the people. So he is responding to our war. So when I lift my hands and I say, God, I love you. God, I bless you. God, I worship you. God, I honor you. I am warring. And when I go in and I go deeper and deeper, the waves, even the the what the waves of the ocean begin waving back and forth, right? Because I am a part of the earth's creation, right? We just we we hewn from the earth. We hewn all just made from the dirt. Okay. And so I get with the air, the air gets with the water, the water gets with the sand, the sand gets with the trees. It all just, and we all get to just worship in God and we get to warn and God gets to hovering. And when all of that takes place, then in that next verse, it says, then God spoke. And when he spoke, he says, let there be, let there be. And so when you hover, when, I mean, excuse me, when God hovers over your war, it causes him to open up his mouth and speak. Y'all don't hear me this morning. When God hovers over your war, it causes God to open his mouth and speak and say, and say, let, let there be light. Who needs light in their life today? <laughs> Who needs some light in their life today? Let there be light. Oh my God. I know many don't think that the beginning of Genesis is a revelation for us, but my God, it is a revelation for us. It is a revelation of how we commune with our father. It is a revelation of how we become intimate with our father. So that is why we war. So that's why you hear this energy coming from my mouth because I've been warring this morning. God, I love you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Tony. <laughs> No, hey, I'm like, Lord, come on, look, speak, Lord, you will speak, come on, man, have your way. No, y'all, we just, and, and just to catch y'all up on speed, so um, God has came in and really shut down how we normally do things, and so we ask the Holy Spirit to always have his way, so Holy Spirit then came in through Kiana this morning, um, because normally we do worship, and then we do praise, and then we speak, but I feel that God is saying it's time for us to war and roar. So it's time for all of us, because let me tell you something. The Bible says the devil is roaring, seeking like a lion whom he may devour. And Jesus told Peter that the enemy tries to sift us as weak. But come on, but we shall have life and we shall speak with our mouth. And Tracy talked last night about the muzzle. The enemy has us muzzled. And so it's time for us to open up our mouth. It's time for us to rise up in the spirit, y'all, because we're in a warfare, y'all. We're in a battle. And we know that we got the victory, but it's something that God is asking for us to do. God is commanding for us to do. And so we got to rise up because there's a sister, one of our sisters, the spirit of suicide is upon her. And we cast that thing out in the name of Jesus. And so God is doing right now is there's so many people who are depressed, who are discouraged, who are disappointed, who are frustrated, who are bound in their minds. And so the enemy, this is what he comes after, y'all. He comes after our minds. And so we got to war. It's time to war. It's no more time to lay down and lay back. We got to rise up. And so this morning, I'm asking each and every one of you, if there's somebody on your heart to pray for, let's pray. Let's pray for them, everybody. Let's pray. Let's take our turn praying and interceding because that's what Job did. Even though his friends came after them, attacked him, talked about you should curse God, God doing all these things to you, God to call you to lose all these things, and you still want to praise God, you still want to want to uh, Shabbat the Lord, you still want to glorify God. And Job said, I'm going to pray for you. Come on because he knew the power of God. He knew to trust God and God not only restored Job, but come on, he blessed his friends. 
Job prayed for his friends. He interceded on his friends and family's behalf. It's time for us to intercede, y'all. Intercession is here. We got to intercede because the enemy is trying to come after our friends. He's trying to take this, this. There's a spirit of death. There's a spirit of death that has been released in territories, but we come to take back those territories and we come to release the spirit of life and life more abundantly, a long and satisfying life. A long and satisfying life. And so I'm just going to pray and then we're just going to take turns and pass the baton. That's what I hear the Holy Spirit saying, pass the baton. Pass the baton to your sister. Pass the baton to your sister. Pass the baton. We got to pass the baton, y'all. And if it get a little heavy up in here, y'all, we speaking in tongues and we getting fire because there is a life. Come on. And, I, and, and God told me, and he says in his word that he'll leave the 99 and come after the one. And Kiana talked about the one. There's one on here that 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 is she's not here with us in the room, but she's having suicidal thoughts. And that's our sister. We might not know her that well, but we know her in the spirit. We know her in the spirit. And we come to in the seed for life. Life. Because I'm I, let me tell y'all, like I, I'm on fire. I'm on fire because I know the enemy is releasing death, but I know that God is releasing life and we got to speak life and we got to discern what is happening. We got to discern what's happening because I'm not going to let the enemy take my sister. I'm not going to let him take my sister. I don't even know her name, but I know she's my sister. She know, I know she's my sister in Christ. She's my sister in the spirit. She's my sister in the kingdom. So whatever I can do, if I can lend strength through my voice, if we can lend strength through our voice, if we can lend strength on the behalf of ourselves, because we know to pray. Come on, we come to pray because we know the power of praying. We know the power of fasting. The Bible says we shall always pray and faint not. It's time to pray. It's time to pray, y'all. And so I just thank God for your life, Tracy. I thank God that the fire of God released upon you and the oil has been poured out. It's poured out on top of your heads. It's poured out. It's poured out on top of all of our heads. The cup has been poured out, y'all. And God say, well, how can how can, how can y'all meet God on Zoom? What y'all doing on Zoom? Let me tell you, God show up anywhere, anywhere, at any time, at any place. He'll come in. He'll show up. He'll change the game. He'll change the atmosphere. He'll shift some things around. Wherever you are, that's where God is. He's our omnipresent. Wherever you need him to be, whatever you need him to do, he'll be there. And so we just thank God for showing up. We thank God for using our sister as a point of contact to tell us to rise up and war. It's time to war, y'all. It's time. It's time for such a time as this. We have been called. We have been anointed. We have been appointed. We've been anointed to preach, to teach, to heal, to cast out devils. We're anointed for this. And don't nobody tell you just because you're a woman that you can't do it. No, 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 no. We bind that spirit. It's time to take the muzzle off. I don't know. I don't care if you just say, come off mute and you just say Jesus as you're praying. If y'all, you know to say Jesus, say Jesus. Because in the name of Jesus the enemy is defeated. So if you got to just say Jesus and you know all you know is Jesus, say Jesus. Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because in that name, demons tremble. At that name, he's a firm foundation. He's our solid rock. We got to get back to what we know to do. We got to get back. We got to get back rooted and grounded. Come on. We got to get back rooted and grounded. We got to dig them roots deep. Them roots got to go deep because let me tell you, the wind's going to come. The rain going to come. Challenges going to come. But if we're deeply rooted in God, then we can stand. And we can not only fight for us, but we can fight for ourselves. And we can fight for our brothers. We can fight for our family. So God, I just thank you. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to command some stuff to be, to be released. I'm going to command some stuff to be loose. And, and after I, I get off here commanding and releasing and rebuking and binding, then it's y'all turn. Whoever turn it is, it's your turn. It's your turn. How they say it's your turn. It's your time. It's your turn. It's your time. It's your turn. It's your time. It's your turn. And it's your time because we need deliverance in this hour. We need deliverance in this hour, y'all. We need healing in this hour. The Bible says deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is the children's bread. That's what the children's bread is. And there's a prayer point I'm trying to find, but we know that deliverance is the children's bread. <clears throat> no sickness, no disease, no ungodly soul tie can take us out. 
we ain't finna be taken out, y'all. I just refuse. You ain't finna be taken out. You not finna be taken out. You not finna be taken out. Like, I'm not finna let the enemy take you out. You not finna be taken out. And so in the name of Jesus, we, like I said, we're going to command some things. We're going to break some things. And if, if you where you are and you and as you hear these things being broken and commanded and you just hear a name coming up in your spirit and you say that name, you type that name, do whatever you got to do for that name. Your family, your friends, your school, your your husband, your mother, your father, your sister, your, your children, whoever it may be, because we got to release some stuff. And I ain't playing with the enemy no more, with his bald headed, ugly self. <laughs> Of that, like it's time out. It's time out. So, in the name of Jesus, come on. We break all generational curses of pride, rebellion, lust, poverty, witchcraft, idolatry, death, destruction, failure, sickness, infirmity, fear, schizophrenia, and rejection. In the name of Jesus, we command all generational and hereditary spirits operating in life through curses to be bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. We command all spirit of lust, perversion, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, immorality to come out in the name of Jesus. We command all spirits of hurt, rejection, fear, anger, wrath, sadness, depression, discouragement, grief, bitterness, and unforgiveness to come out of our emotions in the name of Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We command all spirits of confusion, forgetfulness, mind control, mental illness, double-mindedness, fantasy, pain, pride, and memory recalls to come out of our minds in the name of Jesus. We command all spirits of guilt, shame, condemnation to come out of our consciousness in the name of Jesus. We command all spirits of pride, stubbornness, disobedience, rebellion, self-will, selfishness, and arrogance to come out of the name of Jesus. We command all spirit of addiction to come out in our appetites. God, we only have an appetite for you, God. We have an appetite for your word, God. God, let us have an appetite for prayer, God. Let us have an appetite to, to rise up in the name of Jesus and speak those things that be not as though they already were, God. God, let us rise up, God, and any spirits that's operating in us that's not of you, God, we command it to come out in the name of Jesus. We command all spirits of depression to come out in the name of Jesus. We command all spirit of destruction, all spirit of discouragement, all the spirits of discord, disunity to come out in the name of Jesus. We command all spirit of disagreement to come out in the name of Jesus. And we come into agreement with you and what your word said about us, God. God, we break all spirits of poverty, lack, debt, failure in the name of Jesus. God, we declare that we seek your kingdom, your righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto us in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you, God. God, we thank you that you are the God of more than enough. You're the God of life, God. God, we declare John 10 and 10, God, that we should have life and have life more abundantly. God, we shall have joy. God, you said that you give us, <clears throat> you cast down the spirit of heaviness, God, and you put on a garment of praise, God. God, let us put on a garment of praise, God, for our families, God, for our loved ones, Lord. The spirit of heaviness cannot have its power in the name of Jesus, God. God, come in, Lord. Come in and hover hover on each and every one of my sisters, God. Come in and hover, God. Come in and open up the floodgates of heaven over their lives, God. Come in in the name of Jesus. Rebuke the reviler. Rebuke the devourer, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for our children, God. We call them blessed in the name of Jesus, that they shall be blessed going out and blessed coming in, God, that nothing by any means shall hurt them, God. God, we declare our children shall be trained up in your ways, God, and they shall not depart from it, God. We declare that your children shall know you, God. Our children know you, God. Our grandchildren know you, God. Our children's children know you, God. And their children know you, God. And they want to respond to your name, God, to Jesus' name, to live for you, God, to live for your name's sake. They shall live for you. And they shall always be in the right time at the right place and never the wrong time at the wrong place, God. And they shall have friends that love you, God. They have friends that know you, God. They have friends that connected to you, God. God, I ask that you just continue to bless them. Bless the teachers, God. Bless the school districts, God. Bless them wherever they may go, God. Send angelic escort and assistance, God, to be with them. Continue to protect them and keep them safe from harm's way. In Jesus' name. I'm passing the baton. Whoever want to go next and come off mute. Let's do this, y'all. Good morning. 
This is Trezana. So there was something, um, you know, that God was reminding me of. He brought me to a scripture. And one of the things that God has been speaking to me about is the fact that his children have forsaken the tools that we have. And so one of the spiritual disciplines that we stray away from as believers that should be a part of our lives. And quite naturally, we need to be led by the spirit. But I realize when the word comes up, most people turn a blind eye to it because no one wants to discipline themselves. But the scripture is clear that some of these things will not come out, but by fasting and praying. You know, we it's, it's easy for us to just start talking and praying. And I don't want to say it's easy because it's a daunting task for a lot of believers to even pray. And so um, we don't pray like we ought to, for one, but fasting is a powerful tool in the kingdom of God. And oftentimes when we hear fast, you know, it, it sounds like um, a death sentence. We don't want to fast because we don't want to give up the food that we have. And we're like, oh, I'm a fast from social media. Well, newsflash, there's no such thing as fasting from social media. You can take a break from social media if you want. You can take a break from watching TV, but there's no such thing spoken in scripture. It's food or nothing. And we've forsaken that in the power that lies within that. And so God just reminded me, he's been dealing with me heavily with Esther. I mean, because we've not only forsaken the tools, we've forsaken who we are. And the fact that the scepter is 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 set out to his daughters, saying, "Make your request known up into half of the kingdom, but be careful when you make your request known that you don't ask amiss, because you are not asking for your own selfish desires, right?" And I love Esther because Esther could have did whatever she wanted to do. She was in the palace, and even though Mordecai said, "Don't think you'll escape death," I think she could have. I mean, he could have snitched, but I believe that the king was already in love with her. And he would have already been like, hey, this is just this is my lot. He has the power to make decisions. And if he wants to be with a Jewish woman, then he could. And who's going to check him? Right. So I love that she was selfless. And we've lost that art as well. We are conforming to the patterns of the world where the world where the scripture talks about in this hour, people will become lovers of selves. And the body of Christ is not exempt because we're human. And if we're not managing that part of ourselves, and if we're not careful, we will fall into the same snare as the world. In fact, I read in Luke just recently blew my mind because I don't care how many times you read the scripture, God is just always going to be able to minister. And Jesus said, basically, the children of this world are more shrewd than the ones of light. And that's unfortunate that the world is getting it, but the church isn't. And so... Esther 4, 15 through 17 came to me and it says, then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. This is after, you know, they wanted to kill the Jews and all this extra stuff. And um, they summoned Mordecai summoned Esther and was like, hey, we need your help. You're in the palace. You got ranked now. You know, we need you. The scripture says, Esther said, go gather together all the Jews who are, who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days. Not get off Facebook, not get off Instagram. It says, do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And what I hear the spirit of the living God saying is this. The first thing is, she said, when this is done, I will go to the king, even though it's against the law. See, the veil has been removed for us. It's not against the law for us to go to the father. We can go to the father whenever we choose. There's no barriers between. So we don't have to wait to go to the king anymore because there's no barriers there. So we can go to the king and we don't have to worry about perishing. So we don't have to have the same fears that Esther had to go to our father for what we need. And this is intercession happening right now. She's interceding on behalf of other people. And I love that it says, so Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And are we following the instructions of God? 
have we forsaken the art of fasting and praying, not just on our behalf, like Tony prayed, you know, about generational patterns and different things like that. Are we, have we lost the art of interceding on behalf of other people? And some of these things only come out by fasting and praying. And so that's something that God placed on my heart. And I'll tell you, people disappear when the word fast come up. They get out of there because nobody wants to do that. But some of these things will only come out by us fasting. And not fasting from the things of the world, but fasting from food and water, because man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I think that we've forsaken the word of God, the truth that's in there and the power that's in there. So I just I just felt like the Lord has impressed that up on our heart. And the spirit of suicide is a very strong spirit. And I believe that is one that does not come out but by fasting in my brain. Because it has a very, a, it has a stronghold. It is a very powerful spirit, and so um, I'm just gonna leave leave that right there. But that's what God placed on our heart, and I believe that's the heart of the Father in this hour. Amen. Trelawney, you're so correct. So um, in the my group, um, we uh, I, I've talked about we I fasted this week, and I did, and I thought I was fasting for my friend. Um, well, she's, you know, friend of the king, but she, she's a coworker, but still a friend. And I was like, Lord, am I fasting for her? I was like, what? Because I, I wanted to fast this month. And I was like, Lord, I'm going to fast when you tell me to fast because I don't want to just set a date to fast. I want you to instruct me. Give me the instruction. And so um, I do believe that I did fast for her, but I'm also fasting for this young lady who we've interceded on the behalf of. And so fasting, like you said, Trezana, is a lost art. And I recently started fasting again this year. Now, mind you, I'm still nursing. I'm still breastfeeding. But if there's such a, a strong pull on, on the body to start to fast again because this is a deliverance principle. And so where there's deliverance principles, we have to obey and we have to oblige, even though we might not fully understand, right? Like, I didn't fully understand why I was fasting this week. I didn't know why I was fasting, but I knew God told me to fast from Wednesday to Friday. I'm still actually fasting. I don't get to eat till after six o'clock. And so I want to remind y'all that you don't have to start with a three-day fast. You can start with a one-day fast. You can start with a 12-hour fast, but just do something to consecrate yourself, to consecrate your spirit so that you can discern and humble yourself not only just for us, because sometimes we think it's about us and our prayers and what we want and what we want God to do and how we want God to move and how we want God to, to move on our behalf. But a lot of times the things that we're doing, these spiritual principles are not just for us, but it's for somebody else. Even though we might not know it, we might not even understand it. And during this fast, God is telling me to take communion. I'm like, God, why are you telling me to take communion? Like, I, I, I took communion last week at church. But these are principles because communion it's such an intimate time with the Father. Communion is the victory meal. It's the victory meal to commune, to eat his body, to drink his blood for because what he did on behalf of us. And so a lot of times you'll hear things and you're on these prayer calls or, or in church or or in, in a in a in a, a setting, and you may not really fully understand it, but I want you to be open-minded. And say, okay, God, I heard I heard this lady talk about fast. I heard Josiana talk about fast. I heard Antonio talk about fast. Or I heard a preacher talk about fast. And, and I ain't fasting in years. Or And so because I, I haven't done it in years, I don't, I don't know if I, I, I can do it. But I want you to take that to the heart of the Father. And say, God, I might not fully understand this. And help me understand through your spirit. Because I do believe that, that the Holy Spirit, like he says in his word, is a spirit of truth and a spirit of revelation. And I pray that God will give us revelation upon these, these lost principles, these principles that we are known to do, but we haven't done, that we haven't fully come into the full understanding of, but that we'll just start to obey because that's what ultimately God wants us to obey, right? If he gives an instruction, because a lot of times we'll give our children instruction, right? We'll tell them, okay, go do this. They don't be understand what we'll be asking half the time, but we want them to do it, right? But also, and... When they don't obey, you're like, okay, well, I told you to do such and such. Now, why you ain't do it? 
So there's a lot of things that God may want us to do that may not make sense to our, our human mind, because he said, I'll take the foolish things of the world and confound them to the wise. It may not make logical sense to fast. It may not make logical sense to take communion or do these spirits or even pray, right? To have a prayer call on a Friday morning at nine o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock or wherever you are, seven o'clock, six o'clock. It, it doesn't make sense, but there's, there's a, um, a blessing that comes with obedience. And so as we're doing these things, as we are, are getting insight onto the things that God is telling us to do, I want you to be mindful and also know that there's a blessing in obedience. And so <clears throat> I just, you know, even when it comes to the Holy Spirit, like a lot of people don't fully understand the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues or being filled with the Spirit. But if that's a principle that God wants you to have, or that's, that's something that God is want to pour out on you, be open-minded to it. Because I didn't fully understand praying in the spirit and praying in tongues and having a heavenly language. When I heard somebody do it, I didn't understand it. It was my first time even hearing it, y'all. I had never heard nobody speak in tongues. And this was in 2009. And I had grew up in the church and grew up in, and I never heard it because I grew up Baptist and I never heard anybody speak on tongues, teach on tongues, teach on being being baptized in, in the spirit. I never heard it. But I went to a church, a small little church of 30 people, and I heard them praying and speaking in tongues. And I was like, Lord, is that something I'm supposed to be doing? Is that something I'm supposed to have? And I don't have that yet. And I, I, like I said, and they wasn't even teaching on it at the time. They was just praying. And I heard them praying, but something in my spirit knew that that was something needful for me to have. And I said, well, God, if that's what I need, God, give it to me. Fill me up. And God did in less than two weeks because I prayed. Like I said, I didn't really have the understanding but I knew that there was something that was going to help and benefit my life and benefit my spiritual development. And not only, a lot of times we think that this physical realm, this physical reality, and Tracy talked about it, is, is all there is. It's the end all be all, but it's not. There's a spiritual realm that is warring against us and we warn against it. And there's some things that, that we have to, to do if we want to have victory, full victory, we got to participate. And I just want to leave that with you and anybody else feel the need to pray or to pray on behalf of somebody else. We're passing the baton to you. If you're just coming on, um, what really evoked this and evoked this fire was that there was a lady who is, um, she's battling right now the spirit of suicide, but we come against that in the name of Jesus. And so really God just came out and his fire just came down and, and we're just being obedient to what he says on this prayer call. So if you feel the need to pray right now, pray right now. You feel the need to, to, to come off mute and have a prayer request, come off mute and, and, and make your request be made known. So another sister can pray for you. If there's anything that you may be battling right now, you need a breakthrough in any area or your, your family needs a breakthrough in an area or your coworker or your friend or whoever it may be, God, um, we're just asking that God really come in and allow us the, the spirit of intercession to come in and hover over us and to speak through us in Jesus name. Good morning, ladies. Um, I just I wanted to uh, you you spoke on um you kind of mentioned about the Holy Ghost fire, and I know when we think about fire, we kind of think of um you know especially us up here in California, we think about all the destruction of which fire can do, and sometimes we think of destruction as a bad thing, and destruction is not always bad because sometimes uh, God has come in and tear down some walls. He sent um, Joshua and they brought down the walls of Jericho because that was on a level of destruction that needed to be done at that time. So allow the, allowing the Holy Ghost fire to come in and tear down some of those things in which we think about ourselves, those things that we, those those negative words that we say to ourselves that negative self-talk, because if you just think about it a lot of times, if you think about the way that you talk to yourself, 
would you talk to your child like that? Would you talk to your parent like that? And a lot of times, and most times not. I also like the fact that um, Shazana brought up the uh, the fasting, right? Because, um, and, and, and just going back to what fasting truly is, because we get caught up in what these cultural things are and we start adjusting and adapting according to the culture. But um, that's not what God wants for us. And in um, 1 Peter 2 and 24, it says, he personally carried our sin in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. And we have to live in that. Believe in that. Trust in that. And though I do know that that, uh, that spirit of um, suicide, that is a true and a real thing, but we, got, but we have to give it to God. And though I know it may seem sometimes, at sometimes hard, <clears throat> harder than, uh, easier said than done, but that's what the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that it's easier said than done. He wants you to uh, get you so caught up in all this place where you can't make a decision. He, that's what he wants because if you're if you're unstable and you're and you're going to and fro, guess what? That's better than you being where God is trying to send you because the devil don't want you where he, he already he doesn't want you to uh, propel in in the kingdom. He wants to keep you stuck and stagnant. He wants not knowing where you are or where you're going. But if we just give your, if you give yourself wholeheartedly unto God, and then, and we and we make that look a whole lot look a whole lot more complicated than it really is. But just picking up your word. Being here today, being here in this group of uh, ladies where you're able to hear a word. God is, is, you know, he asked you to surrender yourself unto, unto him, which is a your whole body, which is a reasonable sacrifice. And you're already sacrificing these this morning. You're sacrificing this hour, two hours or however long you're going to be on this call. You're sacrificing that. That's a start. We condemn ourselves because we aren't where we think we are to be. But we're because we took a step. But every journey starts with a step. And you took a step. You're here right now today. You're confessing those things that are not like him. And that is the way. And that is the beginning of transformation. So you keep showing up for you. You keep showing up. You keep doing what it is that God is telling you to do. And you and and you will see those things begin to turn around. But that is not only for you. That is for all of us. Because we cannot. He says be not conform to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that means that what are you we have to be doing something to the mind what do we what what is the best thing for the mind we should be reading when we're reading the word the mind is being transformed god is constantly working on us and we should not be trying to be like what is going on in this world because culture is not is not no matter what you do you'll never be okay with it because soon as you would make adjustment for whatever culture is now next week it's going to change so we have to be, and God is not a man that, he's not a man that lie and nothing about him changes. So why not stick with something that you know is going to stay the same? That way you don't have to worry about whether or not you're right or wrong today or tomorrow. Because what's good today going to be wrong tomorrow in culture. And so what we do is we put all these things on ourselves and we show up in places and spaces with uh, the way we think that other people want us to show up. And the cold thing about it is that we don't even know because we're showing up the way we think that they that they will want us to show up. To be, you know, we have to just become come naked in front of God, so we can be the whole person that He created us to be. And I just and and just you know just do that little soul searching that digging within yourself. Each and every one of us do that digging within yourself to find out who you are. And you will even begin to look different in the mirror. So I'm going to leave you with that.
Because get out your shovels, start doing some digging within yourself and saying, who am I? Not who am I in the world, but who am I in Christ? And transformation will begin to happen. And I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the pen right there. Is there anybody else, ladies, that want to um, pray, have something to say, want to add um, to it? You're free to speak now. That was good what you shared, and I thank you so much, um, Shayla for sharing with us, for sharing your energy, your space and your time with us this morning. Um, Trezana, everybody is giving such um, nuggets of wisdom. And I think not only wisdom, but just nuggets and um, nuggets of your experience, what you know to be true, uh, what you've experienced in the word. Um, Trezana, I just want to thank you too for your wisdom and the word and fasting, because like what um, Antonia shared this morning about um, us being alignment in the fasting, and uh, we've been talking about that all week in our mod group. Um, and so I think that coming upon this new week, we're going to um, be talking more about fasting, teaching on fasting, sharing um, just factually what the word is saying about fasting. For those of you that begin feeling that unction, you begin feeling that pull, like God is pulling and tugging on your heartstrings um, about fasting. And this is something that you want to embark upon. We want to support you in that. We want to challenge you in that. We want to push you in that area so that you can begin to live not only a life of prayer, prayer, but you can begin to live a life of prayer and fasting. And the last thing I, what I don't want to do is just throw you out there in something that you are not equipped for. And then you feel like you fall and you a failure um, because mechanically or technically you're not able to withstand. So we want to support you in scripture, um, in word and in faith. So, um, if anybody has anything that they want to share, they want to um, pray, we just want to make sure that you have space um, for that. So at this time, you can unmute and share what you have or prayer that you want to pray or comment that you want to make. I just have um, a prayer request, Tressie, and I know um, now, you know, you're becoming familiar with my name, but just putting it out there that if my name, you know, happened to pop up in your spirit, I am seeking God for clarity um, in this hour and um, really just trying to get clear on what it is that I'm supposed to be doing in this season. And I have an idea but I think a curveball just came this way probably about last week. Um, I have a business and um, I am a spiritual life coach. And I was actually getting ready to, um, I had taken a break. I was getting ready to get back into it and start group coaching. And when the word of the Lord came to me and said to put my business on hold. And I was like, mm, it was already on hold. <laughs> and so... I'm really just seeking clarity on that because, you know, it's it's hard when you you hear things like the scripture says that God will give us the ability to create wealth. 
and you know you can definitely use the extra income but then the word of the lord comes to you a rhema word comes to you that you shouldn't be moving in your business right now like pause and so i'm testing the spirit in this hour just to see if that's from the holy spirit and um i kind of got some confirmation but i'm still needing further confirmation um this is a big decision for me um because it does affect my finances and I know that God provides and takes care of us and everything like that. Just don't want to want to be making a move that is not um, wise or con conducive to my financial health, um, because I know the enemy, you know, comes to deceive too. And so, if you think of me just um, interceding on my behalf in regards to just clarity in this hour. You know, um, I'm going to say this in a humorous way because, um, you know, we don't sit at everybody's table and eat. <laughs> when they have potlucks at work, you'd be like, mm -hmm, that's nice. And you don't eat everybody's food. You don't sit at, you don't go to everybody's house and eat everybody's potato salad. Y'all feel what I'm saying? And so when you feel comfortable enough to ask somebody, you know, to pray for you, basically you're saying, okay. I'll eat your potato salad. <laughs> so first of all, I just counted an honor that you would trust the anointed, right? That you would trust the anointing um, on my life to pray. And I don't take that lightly. I do not take that lightly. Those that are in the mod group, they know if you ask me um, to pray for something, then I'm going to go 10 toes down and I'm going to seek God for that. Um, in particularly, uh, Trezana, I'm going to seek God for this because um, those of us that are in the mod group, are right there, been right there, know what that feels like, know what that tastes like. We know we know the taste, the touch, the feel, the sound. We know all the mechanics um, of that. And, you know, if, if I told you what I really need, would you still say yes? It's different from the coaches that are out there in the world. And they're making six and seven figures um, in their business of coaching. And they're going by models and stuff that are guaranteed to work, guaranteed to give you numbers, guaranteed to do all of these things, different from in the kingdom when God is asking us to do it God's way. And that doesn't come with necessarily a blueprint or a five steps to, you know, multi-million status being a coach. But God brings us through a different kind of way because now we're dealing with deliverance. We're dealing with the prophetic. We're dealing with... um you know, spirituality, principalities. Uh, we're dealing with uh, traumas, generational curses, altars. We're dealing with so many layers uh, that takes us into different realms. So that's not an easy assignment that God has placed on your life. Trezana, you are one that God has called in this end time anointing. I mean, in this end time um, era where he is called the, cho where we're called the chosen ones. And so this is not an easy time for us. Those of us that are prophetic, we are dealing with a lot of, um, we're, we're dealing mentally. We are dealing, uh, 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 we're coming up against a very big mental beast. Um, and the enemy knows that prophetically I have to, um, I'm going to say mind effery. <laughs> if it's okay to say that I'm a mind effery with my prophetic chosen ones that are spiritually deep and they understand revelation. They understand layers. They understand realms and dimensions. So he's coming at us in a different way. So we have to hear with a different ear, which is why we are like, even if we did not set out to fast, he's fasting us. He is fasting his, his, his prophetic children that are chosen during this time. So we 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 don't even have to say, oh, I'm gonna fast. Nope, you're gonna get up and you just you just it, you just not gonna eat today. <laughs> and you're gonna know that God is doing something. He's not asking us to get up at two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Our butts are up and you're not gonna be able to go back to sleep. So you might as well just get with the program and do what daddy has told you to do. So if that's giving you some light to the areas in the direction that I'm getting ready to pray for your butt. Oh my goodness. So if you if you are asking undertone for the, the, the heat to be turned up, yes, ma'am. Uh praise him and welcome to uh welcome. Welcome to this level of the heat because God is is already taking you there. You're already aligned. And so it's not really something that you're asking God, 
it's really your welcome package to this new level and this new dimension. And really all you can do is throw your hands up and surrender um, to this and, and enjoy the ride, put the, put the seatbelt on and enjoy this journey as best you can hold on with everything that you got because he has, uh, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. And I'm gonna leave it right there, but blessings to you. And yes, ma'am, I will pray. Amen. And I just want to add something, Trezana. I hear the Lord saying, you don't need a blueprint. I think you, I think you're waiting on like, okay, God, I got, I need this model. Like Tracy said, I need this model. I need, I need this step by step. I need, cause everybody has a, a five step and a six step and a three step and a, and a four step. And you're like, God, I don't have a four step. I don't got the five step. I ain't got the framework. I ain't got the acronym. And God is saying, you don't need that. Cause he's already equipped you. And I put in the chat for such a time as this. For such a time as this. And then like the other lady said, I, I think because the culture has said, do it this way. Culture saying, do it this way. This for somebody else too. Do it like this. Do it like me. Once you do it like this, you're going to get this result. I'm telling y'all, that's, 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 it's a distraction is what I hear the Lord saying. It's a distraction. It's, 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 it's procrastination. It's causing us to stay still instead of going forth and going forward. Because we we see the world doing things so different from us. And you're like, Lord, well, I, I don't, well, Lord, you don't speak to me like that. And you don't, you don't talk to me like that. And you don't, you ain't telling me no framework. And you ain't telling me no five step, six step, 12 step, 10 step thing. You just said, okay, go. And I go. And so, and so it may just be you coming into agreement and alignment with what God is already saying to you, to you, Kiana, to you, Shayla, to you, Dolores. Like God is already saying, okay, I, I've, I've, I've equipped you. I've ordained you. I've called you. He's inviting you. It's already an invitation for you to do this thing. So, so don't lay down the burden, my God. Lay down the burden of trying to make it look like somebody else's work. Because your own uniqueness is the, the, the thing that that God is wanting to display. That's how he gets the glory through your own uniqueness, through your own voice. And I'm talking to myself too, y'all. Y'all just don't know I'm talking to myself. The Lord talking to me too, because he talking to me too. Because like Tracy said, you you in the vein where all of us is, especially me. I'm like, Lord, you, you, I done got this degree in nursing. I got, got $80,000 in debt and you want me to do what? <laughs> like, wait, what? So that's what I hear the Lord saying. It's just go forth and go forward in confidence, confidence in Christ, confidence in who he created you to be, confidence in what he's wanting you to do. And so a lot of times, this is why I said, he'll make the foolish things, the foolish things of this world confined to the wise. It'll look foolish to the world that you're doing a program for this or you're doing a program for that. But in that very thing is where the blessing is. In that very thing is your prosperity code. In that very thing that he's telling you to do, in that obedience is where the financial breakthrough is going to happen. Because kingdom wealth, y'all, so you didn't tap into some truth, Anna. Kingdom wealth don't look like worldly wealth. Our wealth that we get don't look like how the world gets it. And yes, the wealth of the wicked is, is stored up for the righteous. We know that, right? But kingdom wealth, Looks like sowing and reaping, fasting and praying, and being in, in alignment on, on our assignment. That's when he said, I'll open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't even have room to receive. He said, I will prosper all the work that your hands, everything you put your hand, your hands to do. Your hands, not what's, the, not what's in somebody else's hands, but your hands to do the work. When you put your own hands to the plow, and I'm studying this thing, y'all, so just know I'm studying this thing about kingdom wealth, but it, it, it don't make sense. It's not going to make sense to you. It ain't going to make sense to the world. People going to be like, huh, you doing what? That what God told you to do? And you will say, yes, that's what he told me to do. Well, how you going? I'm trusting God. Well, how, but the energy in the in the Netflix subscription and you got to pay the, and you don't know you got children and you don't know you got this and, and you got this to do and you got that. No, but God said, 
to trust him. But God, look, but God, you got to put a but God on it because it ain't going to make sense to you. I'm telling you, because stuff don't be making sense to our own human mind. But God said that he is going to pour out his blessings upon us and open the floodgates of heaven as we obey him. As we refresh others, we're going to get refreshed. That's the word, y'all. Now, it's, it's, in the, it's in the Bible. I can't tell you exactly which scripture, but it's in there. As we refresh others, we get refreshed. As we lend out to those who don't have strength, that's when God lends out to us and God pays us back. That's resonating with somebody else besides Shazana. I just know and I just feel it in my spirit that it is. Because we are, we are, we are, we have a um we have a, a revelation, knowledge, and an understanding that's spiritual. And the people in the in the coaching industry, shall I say, or whatever industry you're in, the education industry, they don't have that. So that was makes you unique already is that you have the spiritual insight because we know the spiritual realm is, is where it's most important. At. That's where the really the groundbreaking things happen in the spiritual realm. And you already have that, Kiana. You already have that, Dolores. You already have that, Tracy. And so that's honestly the vein that God has you in, the space that God has you in. It ain't going to make sense. The math ain't going to matter. But God math don't matter. He multiplies. Come on multiplication he specialized in multiplication okay come on what he did with the fish and five loaves he didn't turn that and fed five thousand ten thousand people almost fifteen thousand people because they were not just men but they were women they were kids his math ain't gonna matter it ain't gonna make sense but he specialized in multiplication as we give thanks unto him that's for somebody else i just feel it. it's for somebody else besides trezana Um, I wanted to say something on what you, um, Tressie and Tony already said, um, but I started, I'm not going to say started because I haven't, I didn't see it all the way through, but I attempted to start fasting on Monday to also seek clarity for what I'm supposed to be doing with my career because I feel like I'm in the midst of what I'm doing right now and it's because I'm playing it safe I'm not doing it because that's what I really want to do or I'm not doing it because that's what um, I see myself doing years and years later but it's because I know that I can do it and it's just easier to do with what you uh, know that you can do so I talked to Tressie and she gave me um, a word which was to ask God, how can I serve him? And I've been speaking that and saying that throughout the week and trying to work on bettering my communication with God as well, because I feel like those around me are always like, oh, I can understand this. And, oh, God told me to say this. And I'm like, well, why don't he talk to me? Because I don't know. Um, I, I I don't know how he's talking to me. When, when did he tell y'all this? Because he didn't tell me this. And as I started saying how can I serve you I've been noticing that I've been having dreams again and I've always been someone who I'm, I'm a big vision visualizer I can do hands-on and visual learning way better than I can do uh, anything else and in my dreams I always see I have very realistic dreams to where I'm like man this is something that I feel like could really happen. Or like, this is real people. Like I'm not understanding why they're so realistic. And in my dream on my first um, night of attempting to fast, I had a dream about my career and it brought me back to square one of what I had been attempting to do this whole time. But I stopped because it got challenging. And that was always in my heart. It was just that it got hard for me. So I stopped. So um, I just wanted to share that with you, Trezana, 
because sometimes we stop because we're like, oh, everyone's not supporting it how we want people to support it or everyone's not seeing it how we want them to see it or it's not working out how we want it to work out, but it's going to work out. And if we saw it, we're supposed to be doing it. We we didn't just see it to see it. We saw it because we're supposed to be doing it. And I really want you to hold on to what it is that you're attempting to do because I feel like it can be something really big for you and those who you will be helping. Um, I've also been, I wrote down a prayer and I've been trying to journal this week about things that have been coming up for me as far as my career. I applied to go to, um, well, I, it's uh, like an orientation for trade school so I can learn different skills instead of the things that I'm working on now to better my um, intelligence as far as what I'm seeking to do with my career. And I just wanted to share the prayer with you. Um, it's, dear God, I ask for clarity, wisdom, and patience. May you clear my mind of negative thoughts that will not help me grow. Keep me able and willing to learn and remind me that time can be by my side. I ask to be reminded of my purpose and filled with passion. Thank you for opportunities, challenges, and lessons that will come to pass. Father, please share with me how to serve you and those around me. And um, if you want, you can, you know, you don't have to say those bad words, but repeat something like that. And I'm sure it'll come up for you and bigger ideas will come up for you. Cause like Tony said, uh, sometimes I know I do that too. I'm looking for the blueprint, but what I'm doing is so much bigger than what I've seen others do that they're trying to help me, but it's like, okay, I'm not trying to do that exact thing. Like I see something so much different. So I can't seek the advice that you're giving me. So I'm like, okay, I can't, I just, I just won't do it. I can't do it. It's not possible, but it is possible. And you don't need a blueprint or a yes from anyone else. As long as you agree upon it and you feel it in your heart and God is telling you that that's what you should do, um, go for it and it'll happen. Thank you, Kiana. Um, you said something and it's so funny how God can just answer that quickly. I felt like he's already been confirming over time what it is, but I'm like, I just needed to hear that thing. And um, I just recently enrolled in Bible college. And so it would make sense. Like, so I know that psychology is my thing. I love the human mind. I know that's something that God wants me to do. And um, you helped me to understand, like you said, you, you know, started a trade school so you can get more tools to be better at what you're doing. And so I know that I'm called to be a marriage family therapist, but coaching has been part of that for me because I have coached women who are married and different things like that. And oftentimes it doesn't start that way, but then it ends that way. You know what I mean? And so I've been doing that. And so I just recently started school. Well, I start next week, but I did an orientation yesterday. So you're just saying all the right words. And I'm in this orientation, the orientation in and of itself was three hours long. And I was like, I have not been to school in so long. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is this? So it would make sense that God is saying, just hold on like right now, because this it, it's not even for me about the blueprint, because I know and not being cocky, I am the blueprint, you know what I mean, for what I'm doing. Um, and I'm very much like you. I've had mentors. I think Tony has been the only one who's been able to speak into my life and speak into my ministry and what God has called me to do, because she's coming from a, a spiritual standpoint. The people around me, they try to, but it's one of those things where you just know mm, that's not it. I listen. Cause I can glean some things, but it's like, nah, that's not applicable to what I'm doing. But I think it was more so that idea of God is saying not right now, because I want to equip you a little more. Cause I believe once I get into school and I start taking these courses and God starts opening up my eyes in a different way, that blueprint within me is going to start to be pulled out and I'm going to have more tools to be able to do what I'm doing successfully. And it's set apart is not what everybody else is doing. Um, and so thank you for that, because I feel like um, I'm walking away so much richer. And I feel like I hear God saying clearly, it's just not right now. I'm giving you more tools. I'm equipping you for the next level of this coaching. So it's just not a no. It's just not right now. So thank you so much for sharing that. And even that prayer, I'm, I'm really grateful. 
Um, and I'm grateful that I, I, I showed up this morning because I feel like where a question mark was, now there's a period. So thank you, Tressie, for your word. Thank you, um, Tony, really talking about just trusting him. That's really what it is in this hour um, because I've been so crazy. And so really trusting him in this hour. And Kiana, thank you again for that word. Amen. Come on, what is a question mark is now a period. Period. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, y'all forgive me. Like I'll be laughing. I'm just goofy sometimes. Um, but it, I'm very this is very serious, but I'm just saying, period, like period, okay. Um, because you got what you needed, Tracy. Y'all know, y'all understand. Um <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but if anybody else have any any other uh requests or any other comments that they want to um share with us or any other prayer requests or petitions, let us know. Um I think I saw one in the chat. Um I sent it to you, Tracy. I don't know if you saw it, but I honestly I believe that you are um the woman of the hour for that particular prayer request. Okay, yeah, I just saw that. Absolutely. Um absolutely. So we <laughs> I stepped to um it's it's so funny, y'all. I'm telling you, you have to be ready in season and out of season. And um I just stepped away for just a moment. I was I tried to go uh run my stuff out to um the trash. It's my birthday. I'm playing hooky from work. Um but even when I play hooky, y'all, I, I literally tell my chief that um, I'm playing hooky. <laughs> I'm playing hooky. But um, when I went outside, thank you. Thank you so much. I went outside and I, as I was putting the stuff in the trash, this older white lady running up behind me. And uh, I, I, so I kind of moved out the way. Excuse me. She's like, no, no, you don't, 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 don't run off. Don't run off. And so I'm looking and she's like, I'm a neighbor. I'm a neighbor. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. How are you? How are you? I know, I know you're a neighbor. And she says, no, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And so she starts talking to me about her 93 year old mom that took a fall and got COVID and, you know, and was independent and now is losing some of her independence. And she's trying to get some of that independence back. And so she asked me, she was like, how do you think I should handle this with the caretaker that's starting to do everything for her when I want her to get back to doing everything for herself because I want to keep her around as long as I can. And she's used to doing things for herself. So I'm kind of looking at her and I just kind of start talking to her like she's one of my sisters, you know, like she's one of y'all. I'm like, well, let me just because I'm, I'm still in this energy with you all. So I just started sharing with her what God put on my heart. And she said, how do you know to speak with such wisdom like this? And so when I look up, I say, we serve a great king and he meets us right where we are. I said, so when we open ourselves up, when we knock, he answers. When we seek, he's where we can find him. And this older white woman, she throws her arms around me, squeezes me tight. And she's like, I don't know how that big buddy upstairs does it. <laughs> but I love him too. She was like, I just thank you. And I walked in the door and I'm like, wow. So like, God, you literally just gave me this anxiousness that now in the middle of prayer, I have to stop what I'm doing and go take the trash out right now. Like at this moment, I have to leave and go take the trash out now. But it was so that she could get what she needed. God leaves no stone unturned. And uh, so I just had to, insert that because you know we can meet people in the grocery store we can meet people um wherever and i'm just so i'm just in such gratitude because people are out here are hungry just like we are in here we are hungry guys this prayer meeting is not just for us it's global and right now we are having even as we speak we are having a global impact oh my god i just felt that we're having a global impact. Why? Because we do have daughters that are feeling abandoned by their fathers. Why? Because we do have um, 
daughters that are battling addiction. They are, uh, they're battling their um, drama. They're always in something, in a situation. We have um, daughters that are having a hard time communicating with their children. You've got sons that think these streets got something for them. And so like there's so many different levels and situations that are going on on this call. Some of you are just still mute and dealing with shame and condemnation and confusion and all matter of things. Praise God, but you are, you, 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 you are representing so many. And so just a few on this call for each of you, you know, got one, one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. So with it being nine on this call so far, how many you think we're reaching just by addressing just a few issues? We are already reaching the masses and we are plucking up, calling out, plowing. We are breaking up ground. We're breaking up ground. We are dealing with areas of starvation and people because uh, people are starving. People are desperate. People are, are stretched thin. And so they are contemplating things that they never thought they would contemplate processing through things they never thought they would. There are some people on here that I thought I would never get to the place where I would contemplate suicide, that I thought that I would throw in the towel. I've always been strong. I was I was the one that everybody would come to. Now I'm the one that's saying, listen, I'm going to go sit out in my car and just in the garage and turn the car on. And that's going to be that. I'm checking out. But because we are on this call this morning, somebody's going to have a different outcome. God's not going to leave you in the state that you are in. So I just pray for those in that, that situation um, this morning. Please trust and know that whatever was said and even the things that have not yet been spoken, but is in the hearts, God perfect those things that concern us. He has not forgotten. He is never going to leave you and he is never going to forsake you. Please know this morning that the oil has been poured richly. Please know this morning that God has you on his heart and on his mind. And if we addressed you personally or did not address you this morning, that does not mean that you have not been addressed or that your situation has not been addressed and that your heart does not matter and that the, and, and, and that the words that are on your heart do not matter because they do, right? We are human beings. We are uh, we're fallible. We make mistakes. We curse. We bite. We cheat. We do all of the things. It's because of the grace of God. It is because of the blood. Those are the things that keep us going. And when God seeks to snuff us, he will. But until that time, we're going to stay in this race and see, keep saying, God, I thank you. And God, I trust you. So I want your hearts to be encouraged this morning. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep showing up. Every other Thursday, I do a spill the tea. Please consider joining I drop heavy on those Thursday nights and those are very intense for those who, you know, like I really need to do the work. I really need to do shadow work. I really need to go, go deep. I hit those points and I, I take time. So, um, and then every Friday and then every Friday morning, we are here for prayer, for fasting, for breaking apart the work, for just devotion. Um, but we can't do it all today. But we're always here every Friday and throughout the week. Get involved and sis, get up. Get involved throughout the week. Desiree is always doing a live or a post or something every morning. There's never really not a time that we're not dropping something that is positive, that's inspirational, that is encouraging. And you too can drop something that's in your spirit, that's inspirational, that is encouraging, that will help other sisters out. Because it may not be my voice that do it. It may not be Kiana's voice or Desiree's voice or Antonio's voice. So now it may be uh, Trezana's voice. We are holding you accountable and responsible in this sisterhood to do your part. You know, we need Kay's voice. We need Shayla's voice. We need, um, we need, uh, we need all of your voices. Danielle, we need all of your voices. We're linking arms. Thank you, Desiree. We are linking arms. So we need you to get in the Sis Get Up group. Uh, we decided to not just be a networking Sis Get Up group. We made a conscious decision. And because of that, we lost people in our my group. We lost people that said, y'all are not just about business. And we decided, well, y'all, how do we feel about that? We like that or we don't like that. And we decided, forget it. You day right. We're not just about business. <laughs> we are about sisterhood. 
and we want to see our sisters not just do business, but we want your hearts to be right. We want you to make it in the kingdom. We want you to get through some stuff. We want to support your journey and your process. So we want to do kingdom business and we want to do kingdom life and we want to see you support it. And when you struggle, because you don't know how to support another sister, we want to address that envy, jealousy, jealousy, strife. We want to address all of those as well. So um, with that, I'm going to violate the ball back to Antonia. Hopefully I've covered all of the bases. Please know that we will continue praying. Uh, and we will not, uh, we won't drop not one of you. We will not leave no man left behind. I love you all. I love each of you. We love you all. This is Get Up Love, y'all. Hey Amen, Tracy. Thank you so much. And happy birthday. Y'all put happy birthday um, in the comments to Tracy so she can feel the love. So uh, we're just going to wrap it up right now. But before, <clears throat> before I wrap it up, I do want to... Um, for us to pray the prayer of salvation. I think this is something that is so needful that we start doing, whether you already saved or you're not already saved. Um, I just want y'all to hear this prayer. Um, if you're not saved, um, feel comfortable to inbox us and, and we will help direct you and put you on a path or put in a chat or however. But I just want to pray um, the prayer for salvation. And so the prayer for salvation is, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I need and I want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin, and I recognize your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done, but cleanse me and make me your child. Mm -hmm. And so I ask that you all receive that prayer in Jesus' name. And <clears throat> sorry, y'all, um, it's Louisiana and my sinus is, is it's hot and humid down here when they acting up. But please forgive me. Um, but I want to pray that prayer. And I believe that's something that um, we're going to start doing at the end of these calls because it's so important, it's so needed that um, that we pray the prayer of salvation, that we get saved. And and even if you are standing in the gap upon a loved one to be saved, whether it's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your coworker, somebody that God has laid upon your heart, um, we pray that God send laborers to them as well. And so we love y'all. <clears throat> They're saying happy birthday in the chat, Trezzy. Happy birthday. Uh, I see it. Thank you all. I responded. Thank all of you so very much. I feel the love. I do feel it. I receive it and need it too and need it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we just, before we uh got on this call, y'all, we prayed for Tracy for, his, for her birthday because we know that God satisfies us with long life. Like that, his scripture, that is his promise. And we're gleaning into this promise, not only for Tressy, but for your life as well, that God will satisfy you with long life, everlasting life, more abundant life, a more satisfying, rich, fulfilling life. That is the promise of our father. And so we stand on that promise, 10 toes down, like they say, 10 toes down. Um, we stand on that promise for you, for Tracy, and we declare that the rest of your life shall be the best of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank y'all for joining us. It is well. It is well, y'all. It is well with our soul. 